Hi guys, in the name of Christ, how are you doing? It's your girl Cran K. I apologize for the loudness of the fan in the bag. Please um, try and get used to it in the same way that I am also trying to get used to it. It's not easy, but in the absence of the fan being on, I cannot. Um, what is this? My my phone's over the phone with which I am recording overheats, and then it becomes it dies. It just like and then I lose my footage. So. Uh, I hope you can convert the noise of the fan in the background into white noise as I am trying. Uh, what's up in Christ's name? Makeup, courtesy of Beauty Plus. Hope you like it. Sprinkled some frickles. Um, also the hair. I've changed the color. I don't know if you can tell the difference because this is a wig that you guys have seen a lot in the past. And it's a little bit darker but I made it auburn. So yeah, if it like shifts shadows and changes color it's only because... I changed the hair color of the wig too on Beauty Plus and I am grateful this is a nice little look and frankly I would do it for you know some event but I have nowhere to go so let's just move on alrighty guys look life is really hard um, I'm, I'm really trying to get around the fact that I don't have a silence detector for editing my videos it's it's just rough i i can't take it i can't accept it like i i keep watching my videos and this just it doesn't have enough engagement i feel <clears throat> as much engagement as i used to have and it's not as as catching yeah so this morning i googled a uh, silence detection software that i can find on the internet that potentially i might purchase in the future uh, that is, you know, not going to make ho my whole computer crash. And I'm still investigating that. And if I rock up having silence detection in my videos, you know I have succeeded to find something. I discovered that CapCut, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why, because CapCut is by dance, which belongs to China, but they don't sell pro in South Africa. So I cannot one day in the future when I happen upon the money, which I will, because that's what God does for me, even by CapCut Pro, meaning that there's never going to be silence detection in my videos, in which case I will then never ever get to the level of engagement that I need. So uh, I'm, I'm researching, and if I should come back tomorrow with a video that has got nice little silence detection, then you know, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> that I succeeded. If not, then I hope you guys don't find me that boring. I frankly find myself boring, but this is not even about trying to entertain anyway, because I'm trying to give the gospel. Listen, life is... is of course hard but what's especially taxing is the fact that pursuit by darkness will always just like encircle you even when you're going through literally way too much okay i am so glad that i had to do three minute intervals uh have to do three minute intervals because of the challenges that i'm facing with my phone because it has enabled me to record on this application and i really like the makeup my acne, guys, is really just giving me such a hard time. It just keeps looking worse and worse. But, you know, the Lord will have mercy on me. Um, I, I am trying to get my life back. I have added onto myself, piled onto myself more work than I already have. Because I'm probably trying to basically hedge and put my eggs in as many baskets as I possibly can. I currently upload on four YouTube videos for ministry. Um, I upload on four YouTube videos. And then I upload on one YouTube video for fitness and I upload on one Facebook page uh, for ministry and one Facebook page for fitness. Um, Facebook is a monster to upload on because I can only upload one video at a time. Thankfully with YouTube you can upload bulk videos up to 15 and I do that overnight. But sometimes my computer speeds, or not computer, sorry, but like internet speeds for whatever reason are slow overnight and my content is still trying to upload and that just really gets to me. So I really need to bring my day in a little bit more so that I don't have issues in the future. I'm hedging like not only am I doing all that, but I just added shorts to my ministry. I realized that I'm not going to be able to do shorts with this kind of schedule. Like just produce shorts from scratch. Like no, like never. I can never. I'm not going to be able to get around it. So I made a decision to make shorts out of my long form content and since it's already edited with silence detection, at least my former videos, the most recent ones don't have the silence detection, I just chop it up into a whole bunch of pieces in iMovie, publish, like, pu pu what is this, yeah, publish, all of them 
and then just give them some random name without even checking the video and upload it and that's what I did yesterday and it worked out for me I checked it out when I was looking at the Facebook uploads you know how when you upload a, a reel on Facebook it plays while you are waiting for it to publish so it's not bad so that's how I intend to do shorts going forward the intention is to essentially chop up my long form make it short form content that's the amount of work that I do. I did not just ramble there to give you an update on my life, lest you should have very little care about any such thing as that. I rambled like this to help you understand that I am on a mission to not only get my life back, but also humiliate anybody that dared call me lazy, dared call me disinterested in employment or working, dared call me so crazy that I can no longer operate amidst people in an employable capacity, dared call me anything other than what i am the reviling buck stops right here like right now right here i'm currently under a lot of attack um and i'm dealing with it i was happier two days ago yesterday but now the witchcraft that has newly been sparked is really just kind of making me drag my body through the mud it's stuff like this that pushes me further it does not really stop me why because these satanists, these witches, literally need a person to be in squalor, poverty, suffering in order for them to feel motivated that their sorcery is working. So they will target you most when you are lowliest, when you are struggling, and they will not stop until you have obviously broken through. So I did let you guys know that the Lord is going to give me my fitness. He has told me that that's what's going on. I'm going to gain followers on Facebook. I'm going to get uh, subscribers on YouTube. And I'm eventually going to monetize fitness. Following monetization of which I will then start to basically get my affairs in order. Preparing for the rapture. Uh, in the sense that I'm going to live by myself. Get my own apartment. And then pay off the debt that put me on the credit bureau because I stopped working. The debt of which I had also paid off until my mom decided to kick me out and I had to like raise a loan to get an apartment because I had not plans to just like suddenly be kicked out of home. I've had that kind of bitter relationship with my mom pretty much all my life and it cost me my right standing with the credit bureaus of this demonic country. I gotta go and fix that. I gotta go basically just kind of clean my name up and then get an apartment not even and then at the very same time get an apartment live in it and just do what i need to do until the lord comes and grabs the church however in the run up to all these things that i say people are going to be coming up against them people in the occult um, because they believe that they can just cast a spell on anything here on this earth and it'll be cast a spellable on it'll just do whatever the spell wants it to do with no regard under heaven at all for the veracity of god's existence to prevent block any kind of activity from thriving that has been charted by sorcerers they have no respect for their fellow man and with this very tiny little amount of honor for society they ultimately shoot themselves in the foot and um what is this i, I just I so can't stand that i don't have silence detection because it even does away with all of my thinking too much in the middle of words but let me not be paranoid they have no regard uh for for their fellow man but in so doing such a thing as that expose themselves i've already done a video of this nature where i explain how mean they get they become really cruel over time to their victims and it is that cruelty that makes the world frown upon them and wag their heads on some but what did Karabo do and that's what I'm literally trying to achieve I am presently going out of my way to achieve a particular feat and what that feat is is basically just creating around myself an atmosphere of innocence I am already innocent but it must not only be clear that I'm innocent but that I'm really trying very hard to not die and the apathy never mind the apathy but the constant attack on my person it will serve therefore in the end in the long run to humiliate them that's what I am doing I seek like violently every single day God's face for the violent embarrassment of everybody that's ever afflicted me now that we are at war now that I've declared this war on them I had declared it already very long ago but now they realize that actually Gushubile, this is actually happening right uh they're gonna come at me of course and they're like incredible numbers 
and they're going to keep casting spells on me but I have a weapon that has helped me conquer depression sorrow sadness suicide ideation it's called exercise and ever since I went back to working out I've never been the same in other words all that sorrow that melancholy and that macabre that feeling of, of, of you know like foreboding how forlorn I was it's just gone like it's gone and even when I get days where I can tell I'm being demonically attacked it does not get that bad it, it, it never gets to the point where I come from so essentially the threat of suicide on my life it's gone why because i work out so therefore what these people have recently started charging from what christ the king has shown a sister and also i have felt it in my uncomfortable physique in my easy bones uh, is the affliction of my workouts anything at all that they can find as a weapon menaces to society that's what's good they use uh, this this animal from America has been one to come against my exercise but he's not the only one let's not give him too much fame but I told you about a coven in South Africa full of seedy men seedy seedy men you know I just what I just thought about guys uh, loopy earrings how I would love to have loopy earrings I just I love the color of this hair right now I'm just so feeling it anyway whatever yeah no there is some coven yana in South Africa that feels entitled to whatever under heaven it is that is my end result they they thoroughly imagine they can chart the course of a person's destiny and it is what it is it's like pig and stone they came at my exercise um some silly female from south africa i told a girl you're gonna die anyway she also came at my exercise the one that i met online and we chatted at and we chatted for a brief season yeah all that these people do when they afflict me like this is just make me innovate further like look here now i've got shorts in my in my ministry right i have had them all along in my fitness but now i've got them in my ministry too like whoa like i've never really slowed down i don't know why they keep on trying to get me to slow down i don't i don't get it all right um they've come at my fitness you guys um so i felt it last night allow me to explain to you guys what in the world i was going through yesterday while i was working out it was just treachery uh that's what's good so my body already hurts because i'm working out and i'm pushing myself you know to grander heights i really want to strengthen myself i want to shorten the amount of time it took for me to read to tone my body basically as i did the first time thank god muscle memory is working out for me i'm getting fitter and i'm getting stronger uh so i really like to do very low squats i like to do to a point of basically um looking like you know the way that babies little babies sit um like all the way down like a very deep squat yeah on their like it's like their buttock is always touch it's almost touching the floor and then they're like just sitting in that position like they're about to poop or whatever yeah i try to get those as many of them in as i possibly can but yesterday my body was so weighted down by demonic attack that i could not get beyond a shallow squat i don't know if you would notice like if you go to check out my fitness my workouts you will see that i'm struggling to get all the way down yes my body hurts it's thursday usually monday i've got lots of energy tuesday less than monday wednesday etc by the time i get to friday it's like i'm zonked right but other days i've got a lot of energy to a point where even on friday i'm just killing it all right uh but it never gets to a point where i cannot achieve something that i have already achieved good squats like low squats in the beginning of my return back to exercise um i, I could not get very low because i was unfit uh, but muscle memory made me catch up real quickly and now I can do some pretty deep, deep, deep squats. My left leg is weaker than my right because my I'm, I'm, I'm right dominant. So I tend to put more weight, especially because with the way that I work out is through dance. I put it on my right side, which is wrong. Um, if I was in the gym, I would be careful to make sure that I work out both sides equally but unfortunately because i dance i tend to literally put most of my weight on the right side of my body because it is dominant and it is the stronger side so yes my right thigh is thicker slightly than my left and so too is my right calf a little bit stronger what a what i'm uh, fish paste so if i struggle to lift my body off the ground because i'm not yet at that level of strength i then weigh myself using my right side of the body and well yesterday i literally almost fell on the ground because even there i was weak that is what is presently happening i am like yesterday i was attacked on the dance floor okay i was attacked on the dance floor you guys and uh, it, it cost me my strength training 
to a point where now it's like I was just kind of shaking my body, like moving left to right. Um, like, I'm not serious, like, you know, dancing in a club where you just kind of keep it basic. You're not really trying to do a whole full workout. I felt like that's how I was working out yesterday. Uh, I wasn't... I wasn't fully there uh well i was there presently like as in the actual presence my mind and cognition and everything is in that space but i was not um able to do some of the tricks that i can do i've been getting stronger in a way that if you've been observing my journey you will notice that i'm going lower and lower and i'm holding a squat for longer and longer and i'm just doing stuff basically better i've got more control less uh, instability more balance like stuff like that is improving it's all coming back it's all coming back to me now it's coming back I mean I'm not quite at the level I was at prior to dropping the ball on exercise but I'm definitely ramping up much faster than I initially did uh, in, in training myself up because my body remembered that I used to be fit okay that's what's good but yesterday yesterday oh yesterday guys Yesterday, I mean, if you just look at the differences between the day before, like Wednesday's workouts versus Thursday's, you, you will see that I'm just hovering, I'm shallow, like, you know, and there's barely any smiles as well going on. I'm really just trying to push myself beyond a certain point and it's not quite getting there fast uh, enough. Um, I do want to also increase the duration of my workouts, uh, but I'm currently just kind of hovering on a, an hour and a half, more or less, every single day. I want to go up to two. Um, I was and ultimately to two and a half, which is what I used to do historically But I will never get there if I don't strengthen myself and so gain the stamina and Basically get to where I need to get, you know, gradually it's an incline But that's just thing. Uh, that's just the thing about the occult. They will come at you pouncing like beasts in the wild Grod the gorilla from the show the flash or even King Shark will literally be intravenously injecting some kind of like tired and dust fatigue dust in your bones and it will wear you out it actually like that like witchcraft actually works but the bible says that resist the devil and he will flee from you so you have to strive and push past it so for me yesterday i wanted to stop working now perhaps after like an hour perhaps after like 40 minutes but i know i knew that i would be very uncomfortable sad i would be broken i knew that i would wound up forlorn because of the lack of achievement that i would have felt from that issue uh that i was that, that i was experiencing with my exercise so i pushed but by the time i got to the end it's like oh goodness gracious like what i did not enjoy myself i did not i i, I tend to enjoy exercise but yesterday i didn't enjoy myself um but i pushed to the end even though it was very very hard to get to that place and it's not the first time that i've been attacked like this in my fitness it's it's the second or the it's, a, it's about the second or the third time that it's happening but now i'm talking about it uh, I've been pushing past all of this attrition, all of this affliction, this resistance against me. I have succeeded to push past it in the past and just continue and do a thing that I'm doing the next day anyway. Um, so just based on history alone, I knew that all I needed to do was just keep pushing and basically maintain my goal. Um, the goal of which for me is I work out from a certain time to a certain time. And I record little videos, so one video per song, it's like a set type establishment thing for me, right? And by the time my exercise is done, I feel a sense of achievement if I have at a minimum got 20 videos. I have to at a minimum have maybe 18 to 20, all right? I know that I have dropped the ball if I've got like 16 videos or 17. Uh, and yesterday at the time that I wanted to stop working out, I probably would have maybe even been sitting, been sitting on maybe 13 or 14 sets i don't eat 14 of whole songs that i would have danced to and like incorporated all of my my, my strength and my um cardio in that whole thing so i love dance because it's literally a combination of everything it's like pilates mixed with zumba i love it okay yeah so anyway let's just move past that thing the wicked they they can't get they can't help like can't nobody catch a break that's what i'm trying to explain they will come at anything and everything they operate on nothing but jealousy and I do not know like yesterday after working out right like okay first of all in the middle of exercise first and foremost in the middle of exercise I saw um, my sneakers being red in color red I always associated and this is just for me right 
not everybody feels uh, like dreams this way whenever i see the color red in my dreams or my visions it always represents witchcraft and my sneakers were blood red they were blood red i had a vision of my sneakers being blood red that was god showing me they're coming at your workouts that's why you feel like this you're not going to be feeling like this indefinitely resist the devil he will flee from you and you will regain your joy in exercise so after working out after pushing to the end it was rough to get there though you might not see it on my face um however if you are any kind of observant you might notice that i am less agile and also i'm falling apart a lot more less balanced i was less balanced like a lot, a lot less um smoothness between moves like when you get out of one dance move and into another you got to make sure your feet are grounded type thing so you don't look clumsy i looked clumsy in very many parts and that was because i was being afflicted and i could tell that i was being afflicted and oftentimes when i clumsily just fall apart i stop and i start again from scratch because i have a thing about perfection i am trying to achieve a goal over here not only do i want to improve my dance but i also want to improve my form i want to improve my fitness everything i wanted to ramp up i want everything to end line so after exercising then when i was finally done it was like true i made it to the end uh, i had yesterday unfortunately reached only 17 uh, I only did 17 sets uh, when I checked out my, my iPhone to see how many sets I did it was only 17 so I had missed it by three sets because I was like slowed down uh, type establishment thing but uh, let's just put this out there sometimes however I still manage to get the amount of exercise that I need to get in and I only find this out when I'm doing my video edits because the final cut is the one that tells me how long I actually worked out for because uh, there I take out the silent not silences but the breaks in the middle I take out the um, uh, switching off my camera switching it on switching on yeah you get my point the video etc record stop record all that jazz I take that out and I uh, reduce my video length to half the size by adding speed editor twice over as well as changing the tone of the voice so as to not get slapped with copyright on youtube so you know how long i've worked out for if you just multiply the amount of time by two so i i, I tend to gun for 45 minutes and up okay uh and when i'm sitting on anything under 45 minutes ma minimum 40 minutes i get all sad I get all broken because I did not achieve my goal. I did not achieve my duration goal because that's what's going to build my stamina. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, but yesterday, thankfully, I reached 43 minutes, which was not quite at the 45 minute mark. But I feel really good when I'm like, you know, on 50 minutes because then I, I excelled beyond where I'm at currently with my level of fitness. Uh, I have not yet gotten to one hour on the day when I get to a one hour mark. That'll tell me that I've done two whole hours of exercise right uh on monday i had done only 39 36 minutes or something and i was like why was it 36 minutes the reason it was 36 is because i was so distracted by doing video edits in the background uh while also exercising so it took away my exercise time but i was not frustrated uh, in and of myself by demonic attack on monday the thing that came in between my duration uh or my endurance was my own insistence on continuing to use wonder share for mora which crashes my computer and that happened in the middle of exercise i got all frustrated and so instead of working out i was busy like cluttering my computer uh type establishment thing that's the only reason i was sitting on 36 but my workouts you will notice all of them are like about 40 minutes they went from about 35 minutes the very beginning when i was still starting out i was like sitting on the 40 what's the 30 minutes 35 and now i'm sitting on 45 so when i increase by 10 minutes in the speed edited version it is of course then 20 minutes in the stretched out version yeah and right now minimum i gotta do at least 45 and i have been struggling to hit 45 this week 45 minutes I've been struggling to hit it, hit it because of all of this affliction on my person. Not only am I struggling to hit 45 minutes, but I'm struggling to maintain the stamina. I'm struggling to maintain the strength. There's the low, hard knock, deep squats where I'm basically on the floor now. I am struggling to do that because of demonic attack. And for me, it's like, whoa, where is your sense of achievement? You who can only ever come up against people's anything that way. Where is that? Like, when do you ever get to work, witches? When do you ever get to exercise? When do you ever hit the gym? Like, if you're so busy mixing up herbs in a cauldron, when do you ever get to do anything for you? Like, that what? So after, like, literally dragging my body through exercise yesterday, okay, last night, after just just get barely getting scraping through uh the complete product after when i was done now i'm sorry for the speech lag this thing every so often will have a speech lag because the phone is hot but there's a fan in the background hopefully i don't lose my footage um etc anyway whatever yeah when i was done and i was basically just kind of dragging myself now through 
just to now go to the shower and do everything that you would do after exercising all i could think about was you steal wishes like you steal what you do i know that i have them watching me that they monitor my content they watch what i do and then they go back to the drawing board and cast spells okay look the audio is going to be fine guys even though the the what is the visual my i've got a speech lag so just please ignore it for this three minute interval hopefully the next uh three minutes there won't be a speech lag okay all i could think about was which is you come against people's careers and in my particular case right now people are coming up against uh what is this my fitness to wear me out like just it's like inject some kind of fatigue tranquilizing dust in my exercise to slow me down all right so there's nothing at all that they don't target if at all they envy you they will target it my thing with that is once then if at all a person is not like arabo and they are a spiritual warrior where they hold on by prayer and supplication and resistance to god until they pierce you on the other side when they're not like arabo but they give up they basically throw in the towel because they think it's them they think that they can't do it they think that they're losing their strength they think that they're losing their stamina they think that they can't push anymore they probably believe that this funny little fatigue in their body is them when then they throw in the towel and so their dreams of becoming a gymnast are gone the dreams of becoming an olympic swimmer are gone because you're so jealous that all you could do is high school swimming when uh, rather your friend ended up being given a scholarship to go and swim at a university and so therefore could potentially qualify even for the nation for, for, for the international olympics mm. when you are that envious of your girl and then you bewitch her so that she can't train properly you bewitch her so that she cannot swim the laps get get her time when you do all that and in and of yourself you're a swimmer so you you also want to achieve great success when then you bring your unfortunate friend down to your level where now they're just somebody that was a husband with great fame on the swimming in the swimming pool in high school but they did not quite make it to university swimming and so therefore become a literally a pro athlete when then you pride yourself in having done that to your friend and both of y'all now are just mediocre randos both of you are just gathering dust doing nine to five jobs when you were supposed to be entire like olympic swimmers where does that leave you i mean the thing is you know that your friend failed there's still a speech lag here guys i'm sorry okay you know that your friend failed because you manipulated her outcomes whereas when you fail in life it's because you actually genuinely suck so when then you elevate yourself above somebody that has true genuine skill and talent above you where is your sense of achievement i would like to know because frankly i mean in using vele vele uh, exercise right when i get started because i really love to dance i don't feel like it's exercise so it's not hard to get started in the first place right but if for instance i was doing some rote mundane very boring exercise which back in the day i used to try and it fell apart that's why now all i can do is dance i've tried the whole gym thing i've tried the whole pilates class thing i've tried the whole treadmill bicycling machine circuit training thing and it was just oh goodness whoa what it was a drag right it was a real drag for me especially considering i hadn't gotten myself accustomed to working out i wasn't fit i was trying to get fit um and i was never a gym bunny in high school anything of that nature so i wanted to become one when i was in corpus africa in my um mid-20s i tried uh, i even went to go and see a, di a dietitian and everything because i wanted to lose weight and yeah all that jazz um type establishment thing and the ropeness of the exercise was just oh just getting on the stepper getting on the cycling machine oh doing those um stretches and pilates it was oh goodness like just a drag do you understand it was a violent drag that's what's good uh but the thing that took me back to the gym was when i went to the dietitian once a week the dietitian of which was situated at my offices because it was a deal that she had made with mtn on our medical aid which was camf so i would see her on the tuesdays that she would rock up and when she would do the measurements of my body to see how many inches i've actually lost and the weight when it was going down that gave me motivation to keep going back to the gym that gave me motivation to keep pushing i had a sense of achievement so even though i couldn't stand the workouts even though I found it very rote, very mundane, very boring, I was often very shy at the circuit training, didn't know what I was doing, didn't know how to operate the machinery and all that jazz, um, the results evidenced that I wasn't wasting time. 
coupled with the fact that people actually noticed that I was sli I was slimming down. My boyfriend noticed, um, my friends noticed, but the first person to notice, of course, was the dietitian because she will see even the smallest little inch of a reduction in your thigh, right? Yeah, that's what's good. That kept me going back. And so now, every time at the end of a workout session, of however long I wanted to be at the gym, I would feel so alive. I would feel so good. It was a drag to get in the gym, but it was victory to get out. At the end of my dedicated amount of time of being in there, it was wonderful. Okay? Long story short, what I'm trying to get at here is that when you work at something and then it produces results, there is an actual release of some kind of chemical in the body that makes you feel like a bag of chips and all that. Do you understand? It makes you feel excellent. It can improve your day quite significantly. To know that you have passed an exam, that you studied for 10 days crunching, doing nothing but that, passing up on the parties, and now you've gotten 89%. It gives you a jubilant flair. It just makes you feel like you've arrived. You out here in these streets, bopping all day, looking at everybody on some check me out. I am the academic of note because I passed with flying colors after burning the midnight oil for a whole decade. Okay? Yeah. There is a sense of achievement, which is you literally rob yourselves of that euphoria. You rob yourselves of the, that those dopamine fixes of checking the results at school going down the list of student names finding yours going then to the mark and seeing an excellent pass even above other students above you and below you there is something about achieving there is something about actually working for what it is that you eventually acquire something that when you have trained for very many hours and then you get the job you get the placement you pass the audition when you become the one that is chosen because you put in the time nothing beats that feeling Nothing beats that feeling. Come and tell me today if I'm lying. Nothing. So since you kick people out the way that you might be the one to get ahead. And using the example then, for instance, of the student at the university who is the A student that's always passing above everybody. She's always number one. Up top, she's the one with all of the accolades. When you make sure that she gets some strange disease and is sick all year, so she's not there to study for this particular academic year, and then you get bumped up to number one, where is your achievement? Where is it? Because you're pretty aware that young Tessa or young Karabo, or young Pinky or Rinelue would have slayed you if they did not catch a strange disease because you did not want them in your way anymore. You move them out. There is no sense of achievement. You know, deep down inside, from like the beginning to the end of your thoughts, that there is someone better than you, that you knocked out of the way. How can you ever be confident in that state? How? When you are aware that there was someone better, when you comprehend that, you will always be passive aggressive, uncomfortable, and hate everybody else in the room that rocks up and potentially has the same level of talent as the person that you kicked out the way. So you become basically a criminal for life now. You become a criminal for life now and there's no real honor in you. And everybody that is good at anything at all that they do will always intimidate you. However, the thing that gives you confidence to know that Psh, I got this is constantly consistently passing above everybody in the room no matter how hard they try the thing that makes you feel like you're the champion the thing that makes you feel really good about yourself is consistently knocking down other dominoes from the hard work that you put in and every time in any new sporting field anytime in any new battlefield anytime in any new exam session anytime you always come out number one when you're that girl that's always coming out number one no matter what new entrance into this competition come that's when you know that you're good that's when you know that you're good and then when you come number two you look at that person on some yeah all my life i've been like, killing it and also and finally somebody did beat me and then you honor them you give them respect on some give credit where it's due because no one has been able to defeat me for 10 years until you rocked up that that is a uh, honest competition and that is also honest success when I was working for at MTN, for instance, there was this one Indian guy that cast a spell on my career because I was growing really quickly. He was a senior business analyst. I was a project slash program manager, so we were not even in the same league. Nonetheless, he wanted to be the one that's seen by all the executives and flying like a bird. 
I once had this dream of him basically being very angry at me, having locked me in some kind of a wardrobe, a closet, on some you gotta go, otherwise I'm not gonna get seen. I do wonder what's going on with him today. I really do. Because he will always have at the top of his mind, what would have happened to my career if Garabo was never sabotaged? If I never sabotaged Garabo, would I be where I'm at? Would I be honored like this? Would people be looking at me like this? And I'm pretty certain that I wasn't the last person he did this to. Because when you operate that way, when you play dirty like that, you will literally try to knock out of the way everybody that makes you uncomfortable. So Agarabo is definitely not his last victim, neither do I imagine I was ever his first. So since you have got no sense of achievement then, wishes, no true sense of achievement, how under heaven are you coping today? Especially in marriage. Goodness, you know, the marriages are the ones that get me the most. Um imichato. Those are the ones that get me the most. Because when you gorobela your way into a woman's life, when you bewitch a woman into your space, when you bewitch a ring on a woman's finger, okay? Um, how the heck do you go to the mall and shop for groceries with your wife and not want to stab to death, shoot perhaps even a mass shooting in that mall, every brother that looks at her? How in the world are you not so inse insecure to a point of violence against your women? That's just the thing. You're not. You're not. You're not. I will tell you about my own country. I live in South Africa. That's what's good. Mm -hmm. South Africa, South Africa. Oh, whatever. I don't like this country anymore. I used to be in love with it. Anyway. Uh, South Africa has some of the most shoddy statistics when it comes to the female community. It is apparently, statistically, the worst country to live in as a woman. Imagine that. Gender-based violence is a whole thing here. Femicide is running rampant in these streets unfettered. Somebody's daughter be dying every couple of seconds in this nation. Or mom or auntie. Mm. Getting macheted. Having our bodies get discovered on the sides of streets in duffel bags. Or hanging on a tree, heavily pregnant at eight months that is what is happening to women in this country when did that all start when did it commence has, has feminism femicide sorry always been that bad in south africa no why because i remember a time as a female in this country living amidst men and trusting that i'm gonna be okay i have never historically prior to coming to christ anyway been scared in the presence of guys being the only woman in the room i did not fear that they might all just gang rape me being in a relationship with a man where we're making out and i'm not ready to have sex but we're making out fear that he might just drive himself into me anyway whether or not i want to i have gotten i have basically been a tease in the past of men where I've, I'd gotten them to a certain point and then been like, no, I don't want to do this. And they would just call me, like I said, a tease or something of that nature. A, you know what I mean? Yeah, type thing. Uh, but never did I ever, ever experience a man try to get me anyway. Because how dare you get me this far in and then say you don't want to have sex. That was, of course, back before I came to Christ and so stopped fornicating. When a woman gets through life having basically escaped some of the most tarnished men in society and has never been raped, has never been experienced through abuse, violence in a relationship, when then she wakes up one day and is violently abused by every guy she's ever rejected, she is pursued by rapists, they are trying to kill her and some of them she used to hang with back in the day when there were still decent people how under heaven did that happen when when did my ex-boyfriend become a murderer a psychopath a rapist when did all of the guys that i used to hang out with or hang in the midst of ever become so violent when did it change when did i stop being safe being the only girl in a room of 10 guys when did i stop being safe because there was a time when it was now every guy i meet is a flagrant misogynist and i don't know when that happened guys that hate women so much that they can't stand to see their prosperity now every time i turn a corner i meet a rapist my goodness like there's one in america but i've got a whole bunch in south africa all up in my grill if anything the coven that came at my exercise are men they are south african men 
that have contributed to the gender-based violence issue in the country. Well, I will explain why in the world even gender-based violence is such a problem in South Africa now when it wasn't a good 10, maybe 12 years ago. Why it has gone this incredibly bad. Why it has rendered our nation the worst country in the world to live as a woman. I'll tell you. Kiritar, it's witchcraft. It's witchcraft where men feel entitled to women. Why are they all slapping us like this? Why are they passive aggressive? Why are they unhappy when we get our careers? Why are they not, um, what is this uh, word that I am looking for, supportive of, of our endeavors? Why are they narcissistic? Why are they moody in a way that they never used to be? Like what's going on over there? Demons, when they come into your body, you guys, completely transform a personality. And I've already said that in the past. They change a person and make them aggressive. The fruit of the sinful nature as it is written in God's word manifest because these demons try to excel or magnify the fruit of the sinful nature, which are rivalries, dissensions, abuses, um, discord between people, sexual immoralities, etc. I could go on, please go check out Galatians 5. An increase in such character flaws then become part and parcel of the personality suite of the individual that is involved in darkness. So when it comes to relationships then, when it comes to relationships, the guy, I mean, my ex is a classic an, a, example. The guy that was once very sweet, very doting, very loving, and consistently that way for maybe like two years or so, it's not like they were only putting their best foot forward in the very beginning of the relationship because they were trying to impress you, but they have proven with consistent character um, virtues over time that that's just how they are towards you. When then they suddenly changed and changed into a narcissistic, arrogant monster that is unhappy with everything you do. That, that is hostile, that is sharp and uh, soft, what's, this, what's not sharp, what I wanted to say was um, quick, uh, short, when you talk to them, they're temperance, they're like, they've got a fuse that basically just gets blown, like real quick, what's changed? It's just involvement in the psychotic activity that is witchcraft, it is literally the work of mental asylum patients, and so I don't understand why anybody is into it, who checks themselves into a psychiatric ward wearing a stray suit voluntarily because that's literally what witchcraft is it is <laughs> witchcraft is the activity of checking yourself into a psychiatric hospital directly just because you think it's more fun to live there than in your own house so you you want to go to a loony bin it is people asking to have a mental illness they are literally asking to have a psychiatric issue some kind of psychosis witchcraft induces psychosis in the perpetrator it makes people insane because you get indwelt by so many demons that your personality is gone you end up with dissociative personality disorder or multiple personality disorder where it is that the person you used to be you're always trying to retract back to them but then some other person always rocks up in the room especially in the presence of your victims you change so men maybe women right or not even maybe every, everybody everybody all of y'all that have bewitched women into your lives you have slapped a, a, a wife a ring on her finger you have thrown it in there with a lightning strike you have not actually gotten down on your knees and proposed marriage you've gone to the devil and insisted that she be your wife and then she gets lured to you dragged to you happily to marry a man that she would never have been with converting women that had literally said no thank you john i don't like you i'm not interested leave me alone to finally decide to be with you and then she ends up married to you at some point she snaps out of it wakes up realizes she's married to the wrong guy and that's why divorce is so high but never mind that before even it gets to the divorce point or the breakup point where even after you break up you stumper her with bring back lost lover even after you break up, you slap her with, uh, you will leave in a casket. You then slap her with death curses. But even before things get there, what in the world happens in a relationship where you have not wooed a woman into your life? And so you know that you conquered literally every man on the left and on the right of her to win her. That she chose you out of all the buggers that were literally all up in her hair. Everybody that was trying to pursue her. She wanted none of them but chose you when you know that that is not true of you how the heck do you react to that then hmm? 
the level of insecurity in a man that has oh, like bagged a woman using korobela is so lofty that inevitably passive aggression comes into the room a lack of support a, a violent streak a mean streak underestimation down talking to her trying to make her feel small because you feel small given that you know that out of a room of 10 guys it's highly likely that if you had not manipulated events she would not have chosen you mm. that's the kind of stuff then therefore that gets men slapping women that gets men shoving women that gets men putting bullets in women's heads that gets men killing women because they are breaking up with them that is the kind of stuff that it makes you obsessed the demons make you feel like you are you have possessed her she is your property and when then she walks out you tell yourself that look like a, a take a lot package i bought you and so until i have depleted this product and thrown the containers in the dustbin it's going nowhere and so when then you take a lot package that you bought online walks out you think it's audacious you probably think it has a nerve and so you slap it with never mind bring back lost lover but no one will ever love you you will die you slap her with death curses if those fail you come up against every relationship she will enter in my ex-boyfriend yo guys came up against every last man that would ever love me told me that you might take a lot package and since you don't want Garabo to come back lost lover nobody else will ever love you and now 12 years down the line that woman is still single after breaking up with him now that is what God has done because I am his child I'm covered by him however imagine if I had gone back to that lost lover since he brought me back mm. imagine if I had actually responded to my ex's bring back lost lover what would be of me today already towards the end of the relationship he was passive aggressive in a way that he never was in the beginning he was already a mental case he was already in a stray suit in a psychiatric hospital and that stray suit was jesus christ if however i did not have christ i would have been in a relationship with a man that would have been tormenting me with witchcraft i would have married him walked down the aisle inevitably i would have divorced him but look at divorce i might have gotten out in a casket or with more spells where he's like you're not gonna be with anybody else he was going to bewitch every bugger that would have poked on my shoulder in the office at the gym he would have come at anybody that was talking to me at the lecture hall Koskolong, everywhere i went even the dude that would look at me in the mall and just kind of like you know want to smile would end up getting a garganti or something like he would end up just not coming through for me messing with everybody that could ever love a woman yeah so i was never gonna be happy and that therefore accounts for some of the marriages that y'all are in it explains the coldness it explains why it's not the same anymore i have a cousin right this thing is is two-way it's not just um where men that slap women like this but i have a cousin that slept her baby daddy that way whoa this dude did not want to marry her um he was already kind of tired with her uh by the time that they had had their first child and the reason this was the case was because her virtue left a lot to be desired all right she had cheated on him in the past she had really broken him she cheated on him in the past with a guy that was his friend uh so the fact that she even like he took her back was for me frankly just a miracle of of days okay i could not understand how in the world that even happened but i guess when you you ooze uh, some kind of pheromones guys stick around even after you cheat on them usually women are the ones that go back to men that cheat but hardly ever very rarely do men go back to women that cheat especially that badly like to a point where you will go and have a whole thriving one or two year relationship with a friend uh, of of your 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 ex and then go back to him after you are done with that abusive relationship because the other guy ended up beating her up that's what's good yeah this cousin was beloved very deeply by this guy in the beginning but you know when you cheat on a man stuff like that kind of flies out the door when you cheat on a man uh, no longer is that swagger that you held in his heart as uh, effervescent is no longer that strong the guy is no longer feeling you that much so by the time 
they were like a couple of years into their relationship and they had a child now this guy was like not even trying to marry that he like literally did not propose marriage because he was not sure he wanted to be with her um i knew these things because my ex-boyfriend and him were friends and they would gossip and my ex would come and tell me and i didn't tell this cousin of mine what was being spoken so this guy did not want to marry my cousin he didn't want her she was a placeholder he wanted to get out if anything the thing that was keeping him around was the baby it was the child but he wanted to leave next thing couple of years down the line during my persecution i find out that they got married a whole traditional thing i don't know if they ever did the white wedding i was like oh maybe they recovered maybe they recovered until god was like recovered what for who for any hi but if that same cousin could be worse living tell us out of your entire career take everything rip the carpet from under your feet how then do you think upon discovering witchcraft a woman like that will react towards a man that does not want to marry her she went and pulled a spell on her husband on her boyfriend at the time to marry her and he did exactly that he married her but today i am funny like no man's business he wants a divorce he can't stand her but he's married to her witchcraft just doesn't work guys it does not indefinitely keep a person intrigued he proposed marriage to a woman that he was not interested in so that that's just the thing then when you're sitting in relationships where you would not have been the first choice you have to deal with the fact that you are a failure and a most abysmal one there is no sense of achievement none you were not chosen and so because you are not chosen to be the one who wins the pageant when then you manipulate the results to be the beauty queen of the week honey you're not the beauty queen and ultimately the one who was in a position to choose the beauty queen is going to spot that they made a mistake and upon making that uh, observation will then try to correct the circumstance but because now you are so used to witchcraft that you bewitch everything including the staying power of things in your life now you are going to go and uh, reduce yourself to bring back lost love no one else will ever love you kill them all kill them all type sorcery my ex-boyfriend for instance was busy 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 with me throughout our relationship not throughout about two years into our relationship that's when he started manipulating me with sorcery a type establishment thing and i wanted to get out did not could not because i was being pulled back by something ultimately christ set me free and then he invested a whole bunch and bring back lost lava etc that didn't work and now today he's still the bane of my existence his most poignant of spells that he has cast has been a death curse to make me commit suicide because i'm embarrassing now i told you guys that my whole ultimate goal is to embarrass these witches with what it is that they started because it becomes clear over time that they are demonic it becomes clear over time that they are satanic it becomes overt to everybody that something nasty and ominous has happened over there and so the suspicion of society then embarrasses the living daylights out of them that is my mission but not before i ask that very question which is is it enough to just get everything you want even though it does not want you is it enough to be second third fourth fifth 20th best and yet nonetheless still get the girl will you not for that reason ever envy every man that can ever look at your gorgeous girl that you managed to bank this little random wako america this american fool yes like it if i had been blind all the way up until i married him yeah i would never have caught a break i was never gonna get complimented by my own husband I was never going to get acknowledged, rewarded, but with love and affection. He was going to withhold affection. And then everywhere we went where any other man would look at me, he would then take it out on me. I told you I was going to end up being a punching bag for him. He was going to beat me up. He was going to uh, uh, deface me. But not only that, he would also have killed my children. I told you. Gender-based violence is a byproduct of sosar. In South Africa, you must understand, it is a byproduct, a relationship where people are slapping each other with witchcraft ends horribly. It ends in crimes of passion. It ends in murder, suicide. It ends horribly. If divorce is the end result, that is basically the best of all outcomes. It is the lesser evil because largely death tends to be the end of it all. So all of these women all over the show that are being butchered by men because they want to leave a relationship or because they ran their mouths, it is only because the said men in question held them hostage with sorcery, but they were acting out of character for the sorcery. 
they were not doing what the witchcraft would have them do. They did not go on right ahead to become the docile servants that are basic servants, subservient, that are nothing but pulled by the nose by their sorcerer husbands or sorcerer wives, etc. And so therefore, because they're not acting in accordance with the witchcraft, they get frustrated and ultimately this thing that they feel they own is their property. They feel that given that it is their property, they get to annihilate it. They just kill. These men who shoot women five, six, seven, twenty times over and over again. She's already been dead a good five minutes and you're still shooting. Mm. These men who kill women like this kill them precisely because they brought them in Kakorobela, got obsessed with them. It's like they roofied themselves, got obsessed with them, felt entitled to them, got jealous of everything, were unable to keep themselves in the bunch. And when finally this woman, after years of abuse, gets out, that's when she dies. Mm. So GBV in South Africa, understand byproduct witchcraft witchcraft begets violence it's that basic it begets violence no good can come from it the entitlement that people feel over entire human beings to a point of a lack of freedom looseness they can't move their feet left or right feeling that you can chart the court of the course of a person's destiny where now you're gonna make like god and make like a puppeteer and put somebody on strings and tell them you're gonna go left you're gonna go right you're gonna go up and down you're gonna turn this particular corner and you're not gonna go beyond the t you're not gonna go beyond uh, a particular um distance they they hook up a linear regression constraint set for people within which they can operate they tell you you will live in this box and when you live outside of it when you basically don't act like a zombie when you don't act like a robot or a robot or a puppet on a string they feel irritated by your lack of obedience to their sorcery and that's what begets violence do you understand so the gbv in south africa is entirely you can take it back and suture it to the adoration by south africans of tagat la loyana you just want to get get anything you want lime katwen you want to get the wife you want the best girl in the school even though i got funwena at first next thing she's married to you she's gonna want to be with the guy that she originally had a crush on and when then she goes to be with that guy that's when you're gonna put a whole live round in her skull i am currently being sacrificed or at least attempted sacrifice it's not gonna work by some filthy animal in america because for five seconds i responded to his rufis his little spiritual the like demonic waza waza juju I snapped out of it. The Lord snapped me out of it. If anything, I would not have even capitulated to that if I was in my right mind in the sense that I was not suffering so much to a point of settling. Mm. When then I was like, no. When then I was finally like, ah, no, we're not doing this. I'm sorry. Ew. You don't even suit me. You're not in my league. What was I doing? What was I doing? He was like, <laughs> like literally he laughed at me. And he went on right ahead to pick up some of the most prolific spells I've ever seen in my entire tenure as a Christian. And I'm still fighting him to this day. Penduluming between love spell, death curse, love spell, death curse, love, like on and off, on and off, on and off. He is a terrorist in my life because he is now with a deep psychosis. They develop a psychosis. They ask for a stray suit on the day they dabble with voodoo. On the day they dabble with uptagating amatambo. On the day you dabble with witchcraft, you ask for a mental illness. And this guy is now a goner. He is a, a mental ward case. Do you understand? Telling himself that it is still possible for us to be together. To this day, since I Tumpa, Telling himself that it's either me or nothing. You will live in a casket if you leave me, but hey, you get to live if you are with me. A man that thoroughly thinks that it is feasible to be with a woman that wants nothing to do with him. Violence was begotten in that man's bones by mere virtue of the fact that he was already just kind of a criminal and then over and above it he piled on demons onto himself by loving witchcraft. You are using the devil's weapons in order to get stuff in your life. You're getting jobs that way. You're getting houses that way. You're getting careers. As I mentioned careers, husbands, wives that way. Those of you who get jobs this way, how under heaven are you faring exactly in your nine to five jobs or your entrepreneurial pursuits when you look at the competition's landscape around you? Are you not insecure? Of course you are. And in your insecurity, what are you doing? Knocking everybody around you with witchcraft. You are the office terrorist. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you are a witch, you are the office terrorist. You keep on bombing Wongkumuntu Lime Kakweni. The new business analyst that starts, boo, you shoot it down. The new project manager, boo, you shoot it down. The new financial modeler, boo, you shoot it down. The new whatever, even call center agent, I suga, boo, Wongkumuntu. That could be competition for you. You knock them out. 
So you are a, literally a corporate terrorist. You are a terrorist in your organization. You are a terrorist, a terrorist in your niche. If you're an entrepreneur within the field that you operate, you're a terrorist against other upcoming businesses that are similar to yours. So on that day, you are also therefore a terrorist against the country because you're thwarting its economy because other entrants into the market, you are the barrier to entry for them. You're a terrorist. The Lord the other day compared witchcraft to the bubonic plague, the way that it spread so heavily as a judgment in, I believe, the 13th century, or is it the 14th century, right? Yeah, the bubonic plague that killed millions of people. And at the time, the earth did not even have that many people. So that was a, a big number. In Europe, it spread like wildfire, killing people with no cure. That's what God showed me. Um... That's what the Lord showed me that witchcraft is like. The scale of destruction is not even at the, like, it's not even, like, mild. Okay, that wasn't mild. What, what COVID was wasn't mild. I'm not trying to downplay what COVID did to people. It really did hurt people, right? But, like, the scale of the bubonic plague, for instance, that was on and that was huge. The numbers of people that just kept dropping, like, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down, was gargantuan. And from what the, like, God compares the epidemic of witchcraft on the ground right now to the bubonic plague. The, the number of people that it is laying to the ground the way that it kills so many people so many couples ending up in murder suicide because of it like entitlement it is an entitlement feeling like odopile something shiny in the wilderness a, a genie in the bottle and you just keep on rubbing it rubbing it to get everything and when then people resist you when people resist being bewitched when they resist the thing you're insisting that they end up being you kill them you destroy them and that's what's happening to me. I have become a necessary evil for witches. My death is a necessary evil for them because they don't want to be humiliated. Bubonic plague, just spreading, just spreading. So granted that um, that's exactly what's going on here. Where is the achievement when upon looking around you have created a dystopian South Africa? It no longer looks anything like what it used to look like. The office is not the same anymore. The, the, the field, the sporting field is not the same anymore. The academic halls are no longer the same. Like nothing is the same. There is just an eerie silence or a weird zombie-like atmosphere. Something in the air does not quite add up. There is not enough oxygen in the room. Everybody is about to asphyxiate, you can tell, but you still think that you've arrived because you got the husband and the children, even though the children grew in the womb of a woman that did not want you at first. And now she's thoroughly thinking with her fourth pregnancy of divorcing you after the baby is born. And that's when you're going to kill her, that baby, and all the other three kids. That's witchcraft for you. That's the end result of witches. You get a psychosis where another would have never killed a fly will kill your whole family and then turn the gun on yourself. That's what witchcraft achieves. So why or oh why do people feel as if though they have held a genie in a bottle that will give them their wildest dreams when all it does is create a dystopia around them, a nightmarish existence. All you are are conduits for satanic spirits. You are just charged to do the bidding of the devil to a point where you have literally spread a plague all throughout your country, all throughout your city and all throughout your town. Therefore, these rampant buffoons in this occult secret society that wore me out to a point of struggling to exercise yesterday. All I could think about after working out because I finally achieved my goal. I got to the end and I felt good because I put in the time. Yeah, I was like, that's all they have. All I could think about and after working out despite how hard it was, was it's all they have. It's all they have. They don't have any real success, any real achievements any real love just a pseudo love a pseudo achievement that was manipulated manufactured in some kind of a vacuum the vacuous space of which is ill representative of true society or the true color of the talent in society therefore for those reasons they are failures in the worst way they don't have anything real and the lack of realness is exactly what wears them out and causes them therefore to envy everybody around them everyone that has a true peace a true joy everyone that still claim everyone that has not dabbled with the stuff becomes the subject of their violent green eyes they get so jealous of everybody that then they become even bigger terrorists bewitching everybody they hate the youth the, the, their, their worst judgment is the fact that they hate the youth. People who are still bright-eyed and bushy-tailed with a future. 
people who are still looking forward to you know painting the town red building legacies people who have yet to mar themselves with disgrace they envy them they covet them to a point of destruction they humiliate themselves by trying to steal the futures of people who still have them and among their biggest enemies are the youth they become so ageistic they become like they they're the kinds of wives the kinds of fathers that are not there for daughters because they envy the career of their own girl children my dad was like that what when they look at young men doing a thing as men, they can't stand to watch them thrive as young men, still muscular with a lot of energy and all that jazz because of what it is that is the glory they abandoned at the door on the day they became psychiatric patients, mental ward patients by doing witchcraft. They can't stand the youth. My own mom is one of my biggest afflictors because she cannot stand the youth. They hate the youth eventually. And so how in the world are they to raise children when they will ultimately envy them so badly that they will become barriers to entry for their own kids. They will become chock blocks for their own children. They will prevent the futures of their own kids. They will bewitch their own children. They first started bewitching each other when they were all 20 years old. And now that they have got 20 year old daughters and sons growing into fine young men and women, they are now afflicting them. The future they robbed from themselves, they are now robbing from children. The bubonic plague. That's what this is. It is a pandemic, a plague that is just spreading all over society and can nobody catch a break. The only way, therefore, to guarantee yourself true peace and happiness is to stop with the sorcery, love Jesus, and know that when you get old and your hairs the gray start to pop out from your skull, you will be joyful anyway because you did not squander your youth. If you don't waste your life hurting everyone on the left and on the right of you, when you get those gray hairs, you chachala morajo, you take a step back and you let children grow. You let them take the center stage now. You allow them to be what you used to be. You leave them to thrive because you had your chance. You already tap danced on the stage. Now let your 18 year old do that. That's what leaving witchcraft alone does. That's what trusting God does. That's what also leaning on the Lord for an eternal life. And so therefore you trust that you will have youth eternally enables you to get. You don't covet the youngness of a 12 year old. You don't envy the youngness of a 20 year old. You don't envy the youth of a 28 year old now that you are 48 because you understand one day you're going to inherit an incorruptible body. Not only that, when you were 20, you did a better thing. When you were 25, you did a better thing. When you were 30, 35, 40, you were a stellar citizen. You did your most. You garnered for yourself a legacy that is worth the while to gaze upon longingly and lovingly. So you don't have to rip the carpet from underneath the feet of children. You don't have to mess with the youth, but witches inevitably mess with the youth, inevitably. I can guarantee you right now that every little psychopath that has cast a spell on me back then, that's when they started, when we were all in our 20s, etc. Today, they are bosses of young professionals just exiting university at the age of 22 and they are slapping this young woman's or this young man's career before it can even start. I can guarantee you right now it's happening and the reason why I can trust that that's a thing is because it happened with me when I was in my youth when I was just 25 6 I had a boss who was 36 7 do you understand cast a spell on my whole freaking career she was not the only one to do that I then went on to have another two bosses another two bosses in the same company that cast a spell on my career because I was the young thing in their midst that they could not stand to watch grow. These are people that in their prime did not do a good thing enough for them to look back and be like, mm, back in the day when I was young, you remind me of me when I was 25, Garabo. They could not say that because when they were 25, they were busy bewitching every other 25 year old on the left and on the right of them. Every other 18 year old, they were busy coming up against the careers of their siblings, but like messing with the degree acquisitions of their friends. They were busy dabbling with so much darkness that they couldn't focus on building their own legacies. And now that they are 40, they are looking back at all the time they wasted bewitching everybody and they cannot stand the fresh, bright eyed and bushy tailed face of a 25 year old in the office. And so they bewitch kids. They bewitch kids. That's what's happening. That's all they have. It's all they have. 
so now they're coming up against my exercise because I still have a future they envy me even though I'm poor I have nothing guys I've lost everything I entered into Christianity three years into my faith with Christ I was persecuted so violently that I lost everything my degree my career my family my leg whatever I was building it just all fell apart never once however did I ever squeeze a juice out of anybody's neck Never, I never ever exsanguinated anybody so much acne like I can't deal. I never even ex I never touched anybody with this darkness. They all afflicted me, betrayed the living daylights out of me. And 10 years down the line, I still look as good as I did back then. And 10 years down the line, I still have the innocence that I had back then. I don't have anybody's blood on my hands. I've got zero to my name. I have absolutely nowhere to look. Out of all of them, I ain't got no family. I don't have a husband. I don't have children. I don't have my own home. I don't have anything. I'm just like basically exactly what I was just fresh out of high school. Yeah. And ironically, I look literally like I'm also just fresh out of high school. And even though I have nothing to my name at the age of 39, you would imagine they would drop the ball then, right? They would just give up, like throw in the towel, like stop. I mean, you've already taken everything from Karabo. Just You've taken it, like leave her alone. They're still casting spells. They're still throwing stones. They're still hurting me. What is the thing that makes them afflict people? The innocence. The innocence. The thing that is your virtue, your purity. There is nothing that renews youth more than innocence. Than the fact that you have no blood on your hand. You're innocent. And you have loved your fellow man. You have catered to your fellow man. You love to watch children grow. The chatter of young people gives you joy. It rejoices in your spirit. Because you are not at enmity with the youth that you lost. Given that you did not squander it. They might have squandered my 30s. But I did not squander my 30s. I remained above reproach. A pure woman in the sight of Jesus. And so I have no guilt, no regret. Neither do I resent the youth. And so for those reasons, they can't stand me because it's like I am them frozen in time 10 years ago and moving with everything still intact, just without the money. And they just in the same way that they keep on afflicting the youth in the office, the 25 year old like graduate project manager in the office, Babi Zikayen, in the same, they still, they're busy with her, same way that they're busy with me because she has the same hope and the same futuristic outlook and the same thing that is still grabbable and achievable going for her for them it is about the prospect of what I could be somebody who is genuinely happy with no blood on her hands and they cannot take that lying down so for them my death is a necessary evil can't deal they have wasted their lives and now they want to waste mine so really frankly my message is like this where young people those of y'all that are chilling in your 20s teens whoa we understand how seemly and comely witchcraft might be because it's ill-gotten gain and it's instant gratification in that you get what you want like almost it's like right now very soon but the future results the ramifications later on you don't want to be that geriatric that senile that mean-spirited middle-aged man in the office that's breathing down the neck of a 21 year old intern and not giving anybody peace you don't want to be that girl you're 21 today you don't want to be 41 and an irritant that can't stand the youth and witchcraft is going to inevitably get you there so drop it drop it stop sabotaging your girl's careers stop sabotaging your boy or your boyfriend stop forcing him to marry you with Gorobella. if he doesn't want to marry you move on there's more where they came from one man's trash trash is another man's treasure like proper let go if you're like besotted beside yourself with adoration over a guy that is not interested in you move on over time you'll be okay trust me i've experienced something of that nature where i was like our head over heels in love with a guy that went and married another woman I mourned for like six months and I moved on, dusted myself off, off and God healed me. And today I realized that literally, thank God you blew it. Thank God I dodged the bullet because he was into witchcraft. He married the Delilah that he was supposed to marry. I would have been an unhappy wife married to a man that is with whom I'm unequally yoked. That keeps on dabbling with sorcery and also holding me hostage in that regard. You never know what God is doing. So I know that young love can cause you sometimes to be like, but I've never felt this way about a guy before. Yeah, while well, you will, your feelings indeed will uh, don't dry up. They don't uh, get exsanguinated. They don't get extinct. Once you have already had them for one person, you will love again. Let them go. Stop holding people hostage with witchcraft. You don't want to be an unhappy wife. You don't.
The Bible says that an unloved woman that gets married, the earth cannot bear up under her. So if you want to be in a marriage where your husband, just like with my cousin, realizes that how in the world did I even marry this woman? How did I get here? You don't want to find yourself in that position because then the earth will not be able to bear up under you. You will be a dripping tap, contentious, always rapping, yelling, complaining, always gossiping your husband, your children, struggling to love your daughters because they're still so glorious, so beautiful when they grow up and your husband is doting over them in a way that he's no longer doting over you so you covered your own kids. You don't want that. I promise you witchcraft has got some of the most horrendous ramifications on the end. I am 39 years old and yet I have a purity so poignant that I could literally pass any minute now for a 19, 20, 21, 22 year old. Why? Because I've never dabbled. I've never touched the random stuff and I have never stabbed in the back not even one friend, not one family member. I have purity on my side. About three months ago or maybe four perhaps five I went to a bank the standard bank to go and do something there right and the guy that was helping me along upon seeing my ID number shocked out of his mind was like my goodness I did not expect to see this birth date you look 19 he said I looked 19 and in and of myself I was surprised on some okay I was expecting maybe 25 27 but 19 goodness you're pushing it right now but that's how young I look why Yes, it might have everything to do with genes. Yes, it might have a lot to do with the fact that I'm black. But largely, it is everything to do with purity. Youthfulness is of the Lord. What, what is that scripture? God says that when a person honors him, he will renew their youth like the dew of the morning or something. He will renew your youngness, your young days, like the dew of the morning. Purity in Christ gives you a song in your heart. And it also gives you regeneration, renewal. If you allow yourself to fall into darkness, dabbling in the kinema darkness, that who or he who steals, kills and destroys will age you prematurely. He will make sure that you are married to a man that does not love you sufficiently. And so the earth will not be able to bear up under you. You will struggle to love your own children. You will resent the young women in the office or anybody at all that is, you know, still happy. You will hate happy women in marriages. You will hate single women as a married woman because you will covet their singlehood now that you're married like there are so many complications in being involved in darkness you just cannot be happy everything in life is a milestone look at it this way for instance with uh, marriage right when you're still young on the come up you long to get married and whenever your girl rocks up and says that i'm engaged you get slightly jealous because you wish you were engaged the other day i went to the pick and pay and because i wear this ring it's a Jesus ring wed to Christ, right? This ring on, on my finger. One of the, um, the, the tellers there, the lady the working the counter uh, type thing, was like, ooh, you must be so excited to be engaged. Nay, it must be so much fun. I did not bother to correct and say I'm not married, blah, blah. It was a long story. But basically that young woman who could have been like 20 or something, right? The teller at the, pick and, at the checkers could have been 20 years old covets the prospect of being married to a point upon to a point where she seeing another woman with a ring on her finger was like oh it is so exciting to be engaged what does it feel like yeah that's how you feel where you when you're on the come up you covet proposals engagements and even married life type thing and then once you do get married next thing all of a sudden tables turn change and they turn and you start to envy years into your marriage single women you start to envy their singlehood for whatever reason. It's just a lack of contentment. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. All these milestones that we achieve on earth are coveted. All these milestones that we achieve on earth are coveted by one demographic uh, versus another for a myriad of reasons. The young women covet marriage. Once they're in it, they covet singlehood no contentment at all when you are a teenager you covet being grown up you properly covered getting to the age of 18 and not being under your mother's breathing down your neck like command or demands or authority anymore when you're in high school you covered university students when you yeah you get my point however when you then get to your 20s you then covered the youth and the free the freedom the you know just throwing your legs on the floor on the couch on the chair of teenagers the fact that they have no bills to pay and all that jazz like you never really know what under heaven you want every milestone on earth is worth the while to uh, like pursue with every might in your body and occupy 
but do not allow yourself to envy any single group because there's glory in every group there's glory in the golden years there is glory in middle age there is glory in your 20s there is glory in the in the youth of te the teenagers there is glory in pre pre pubescence in being a toddler and even in being a baby do you understand what i'm saying there is glory in every era but every age properly wants to be some other thing and contentment in christ is what helps you be easily a baby tranquilly a preteen with e with, with with just relaxation a teenager hanging out in a hammock a 20 something year old headed into your 30s it makes you a happy joyful middle-aged man or a woman and then ultimately entering into your golden years Ole cool when you look at jesus and not at this fleeting earth where the body is born to die and so we age and so time really messes with everybody's minds you will properly try to juice and sap this particular planet until you have gained everything out of it to a point of converting you into a prolific satanist but when you know jesus you understand that the life cycle of being baby to old age it all gets renewed just like that boom at the rapture or at your death at the resurrection and you will be literally forever young i'm gonna be forever young when nobody else ages and there will be no more competition you will look around 25 to 35 for eternity 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 forever you will look 25 to 35 and yet you're out here juicing 25 year olds in the office because you just turned 35 you're out here bewitching 18 year olds as a mother who is 45 trying to force the door the destiny of your daughter to be charted in a particular way once again this world is dying with all of its nastiness everything so really and truly this darkness with people casting spells even on my exercise it's like your typical your typical you've been bewitching all of south africa and all of world for years now and you're just gonna keep doing it and every new thing I try, you're going to bewitch that. You might just bewitch even my fake eyelashes from my app makeup. You might bewitch my fake freckles. You're going to go on right ahead and bewitch my fake lipstick. Do you? Bewitch my fake anything. Bewitch my fake hair so that it grays. Do whatever. And tomorrow I will come and work harder and harder to overcome whatever under heaven it is that is coming at me. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yesterday I strove through my exercise and I suspect I'm going to have to do the same thing today because the witchcraft is still in operation. I will pierce through probably over the weekend and on Monday I'll be back to myself again. But the wicked will still be trying to bring low the people that they have forced themselves into a competition field with even though they're not in their league due to the fact that they've bewitched everyone around them and can't rest. The wicked are like the tossing sea whose waters bring out mire and dirt continually. There is no rest, that saith the Lord for the wicked. So this coven will keep bewitching me. This man in America will keep bewitching me. My cousins will keep bewitching me. My former friends keep bewitching me. But they will but 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 they're gonna carry on and on and on until kingdom come, literally, until the Lord rocks up with the second coming. Until the Lord raptures the church, lambastes the earth with the tribulation, and then returns. They will carry on with their sorcery all the way up until the end. Yours, however, is to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Strive and push, and you will be fine on the other side. Therein lies the, there's a speech lag now. I don't know what just happened there, but it's okay. I'm almost done anyway. Just push and push and push, just as I am pushing. You came against my workouts to a point where I can't do a full squat. I might be able to do one today, or I might be able to do one on Monday. Bottom line is, you have not taken anything from me. You have only taken everything from yourself. The devil has stolen, has stolen. The devil has killed, and the devil has destroyed. He has deceived you into accommodating a substandard, lackluster life. These people have destroyed their lives thinking that they have destroyed other people's lives. They've literally shattered their own lives thinking they're destroying other people's lives. So keep bewitching my everything. And all I will do is continue to innovate. Now my ministry has grown with shorts. Let's see what's going to happen next time you cast a spell on me. I'm looking for software to edit silences out of my videos so as to be engaging again. When I find that, are you going to come up against that too? I don't know. But really, frankly, I dare you to keep on trying. Bottom line is Jesus is the only way. And as for witches, there's another chance for you. You can have a better life. You don't have to be a bitter mom. You don't have to be a bitter husband. You don't have to be a bitter anything. Repent, give your life to Christ. Let him make you a new creation so you won't be such a menace to society. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Quenke. I hope you've been edified. Bye.